Here's Mark Arnaudo filming from Dragon 2015. I am here with Colin, who is one of the authors of a new game, which is a set of miniature rules it's called Skirmish Outbreak. Skirmish War Games rules for the zombie apocalypse. Now, as my viewers know, I really like war games, I like miniature games, and I like zombie games. So when I saw this, I thought, oh my god, the best of all possible worlds. So thank you for calling, for taking the time to tell us a little bit about your design. Well, good. So, yeah, this is our new game. We've just launched it at Gen Con. It's called Skirmish Outbreak. It's a small number of figures game. Um, and as you can see, um, we've gone into quite some detail. It's a whole structure, a campaign system, working through the game. Um, you, you get to uh, create your uh, teams and then you go off um, into the apocalypse looking for resources to um, survive, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to come across to this table here, I'll show you. Thank you. Okay. So, in this particular little scenario, the RV has come around the corner, turned over, and the survivors are on the top of it. Okay. In every direction, there are zombies come in. Within our game, what happens is noise attracts zombies, which is mm -hmm. you know good for all zombie movies. So, what would happen is it starts with. Um, for each person on your team, and in this case two, I get to roll 1d3 and that gives me the number of AP or action points. Uh -huh. so, so from an action point perspective, I, I've got four. I don't have to spend it in three and one. I can spend two and two or any way I want to use it. So in this particular case, we can say, okay, I'm going to spend one AP to get down. Excuse me. Uh -huh. And I'm going to aim at that zombie coming towards me and shoot. So that's another AP. So if we look at this, this is the character sheet. And so when I'm using my firearm skill, I need a 14 or less than a d20. So I rolled a 13, that's a hit. So I roll to do damage. 14, anything more than nine kills the zombie outright, we remove the zombie. Zombies are really easy to kill when they're in ones and twos. How about less than nine? So with less than nine, what happens is the zombie gets knocked over and the zombie controller spends one AP the next round setting them back up and they keep coming. Good. So basically all you do is you knock it down if you do less than nine. You slow them down. Okay. okay. Yeah. So every time you make a noise like I just did there, the zombie controller gets to roll. If he rolls under 10, if you imagine I did roll under 10 that time, I then get to roll 1d6 for extra zombies. So now I've got another two zombies I can place on the board. Mm -hmm. And they basically keep adding zombies. When you place the zombies on the board, they have to make narrative sense. So they can come out of cars, out of buildings, they can come from behind corners, out of dumpsters, all sorts of things. And so every time you make a lot of noise, I get the chance as a zombie controller to keep adding mm -hmm. more zombies. Mm -hmm. So that's the basis of the way the game works. Um, you, obviously there's hand-hand -hand combat as well, works in a similar way. If you look at this, on here, you, on, on each of the templates, you have the attack and parry of the uh, survivor. So if he's being attacked by a Z, he's got a, this particular one, which is an average Joe, has a 14 or under to hit and a 12 to parry. Uh -huh. Zombies, of course, don't parry. They don't care about yep. damage, you know? So that's the way that works. Okay, so everything you need for your character is in there. Uh -huh. All right. I assume the game is scenario-based and victory conditions depend on the scenario? Absolutely. You, the, the amount of points that you spend creating your um, team is the amount of points that you have to generate each game. When you uh -huh. don't generate those amount of points, you roll on the failed mission table, and this gives you um, I'll just show you that. This is a failed mission table. And this gives you things like people got to eat, scalp, fever, fit a cold. Things have happened to your team. Now you mm -hmm. it gives you the next scenario to play. Okay? So um, you can link scenarios in so a campaign. So you link it into a whole campaign. Right? When you're setting up the campaign at the beginning, we've got a how you met table. So for instance, if I rolled a one on this, there, you met on a cruise uh -huh. on the air break. And in this case, you gain a professional leader with a hero upgrade because there's hero package upgrades. There's different upgrades to the elements. If I met in jail, right, we got an average Joe leader but who has the unhinged upgrade. Right? Uh -huh. So we get all these mixtures of different elements, you know, traffic in the freeway, at the airport lounge, different ways to set things up. And then when you're creating your characters, you've got things like, you know, big and strong, unhinged, bow hunter. These are extra skill packages that you buy as, as part of the process of setting your band up. But of course, the more points you spend, the more points you have to earn each game. Okay? Interesting. So that's basically the, uh, an overview of Skirmish Shipwreck.
And a question that almost always pops into mind when talking about zombie games. Can this game be played solo with an AI controlling the zombies? Uh, so, in the back of the book, we've got exactly that, which is a set of rules um, simply for solo play. It's called Game Control Zombies, right? So, it's, it's just you on your own. You could, there's a system there of how the zombies act and react, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty basic. Um, so, you know, it's easy to play. Yeah. So, yeah, the zombies are basic. So that, absolutely. That's they don't need any detail, right? Excellent. And that's the same uh, reason why enemies. zombies don't have um, hit points or anything like that. You, you know, nine or above kills them. Otherwise, they're knocked down because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, a zombie hasn't got to think about it, etc. The difference that we have in our game is that we have rages. Now, in our mythos, the first 48 hours after you've been bitten, you become a rager. That's a more 28 days style, fast, aggressive zombie. They're much more difficult to kill. So, what happens is when one of the characters is bitten in the game, they will invariably turn into a rager. So, although you're playing normally against Zeds, as the game continues and the more Zeds get and they finally get to bite one of your characters, it will then rage. So, suddenly their abilities go up, everything becomes a lot harder to kill, etc. So, that's some of the aspects that we're adding to the game that makes it a bit more fun. Mm -hmm. It means that if we're a Romero player, we've got those aspects. If we're a 28 Days player, we've got those aspects. Because basically, what we like, we loved all those elements and we wanted to. Um, put them all in one game. Sounds great. Thank you again for telling us about Skirmish Outbreak, Outbreak Skirmish War Games Rules for the Zombie Apocalypse. Thank Thanks you. very much for your interview. Bye.